play. I know you're more on the weeds, Leslie, but I've been really impressed with Jack knowing verbatim what's happening on kind of every parcel throughout throughout the city and that's really valuable to have someone like that that has that level of command and makes our job so much easier as well <laughs> yeah absolutely so i'm going to go ahead and share my screen and what i'm going to pull up is another story map um, similar in nature to the character area map but you'll see that it's different and i'll provide kind of an overview of what you can expect to see in that and walk through a few of the themes that are explored in that and then kind of show that big picture draft future land use map how those pieces are kind of put together at this preliminary stage okay perfect And at this point, you all should be able to see my screen. Is that correct? Correct. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, we put together a story map to provide that explanation built into the draft future land use map uh, so that it's really user friendly, um, easy to understand, and tells a really clear story of how we're translating the vision into the future land use map. We include the land use principles that we discussed at the character area level. We incorporated that into this information. We have an overview kind of interactive map of those proposed areas of change, like I mentioned. And then lastly, kind of the big picture draft version of that future land use map and all those pieces put together. We also provide just some background information too, if there's anybody that um, maybe hasn't been following the process or as we share this, on our portal and get more community members feedback. Uh, we catch everybody up to speed. So within the proposed area of changes, what we did is we went through and kind of put those character area maps back together and thought through kind of on a parcel by parcel basis in some instances, some instances a, a larger area. Um, land use planning principles as well as, as well as really important considerations that came up time and time again in the task force meetings. Uh, we've identified, I think there's like 16 of these different areas throughout the city starting at the southernmost um, portion of the city all the way up through the north area, the north residential area. So I'm going to just really quickly just walk through um, these different pieces and if there's anything in particular um, that jumps out or a really important conversation or discussion that is appropriate for right now feel free to have anyone interrupt me um, and we can make this as <laughs> discussion level versus presentation as whatever works best for you all so starting through for this first piece Again, what we heard time and time again is that importance of that gateway into Smithville and that buffer area. And we're looking at an opportunity to kind of retain these uh, agricultural uses so that as development marches north on 169, there's that protected area and that buffer area that really introduces someone into Smithville. And Leslie, I might maybe zoom out. Just yeah. for, well, I don't know if it's clear to folks exactly yeah. where we're located right now. Perfect. Yeah, let me pass along on my screen. Perfect. So you'll see that one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to the 16 at the northern area. Okay, so if we zoom back in, again, that notion of the gateway, as we march forward on 169, we're looking at, like we talked about in the 169 Southern character area, an opportunity for higher density residential mixed use development with potential commercial frontage or retail frontage along 169. Um, looking at densities that push the envelope a little bit for Smithville in terms of the status quo, but as an opportunity to really provide more housing options for all, which is one of those uh, key fundamental pillars of the comprehensive plan. While we have this proposed on the east side, you'll kind of notice throughout that a lot of the residential recommendations are on the east 
side of 169 with more commercial industrial uses on the west side, we do establish this or recommend that this area right here in number three um, could be very similar in nature to this eastern side, but we think that there's an opportunity to really be innovative in this area and be flexible by providing an overlay that would allow for additional commercial uses or office center uses um, to drive kind of the local economic development considerations in the comprehensive plan as well. So while as the base future land use might be that higher density residential or mixed use with commercial frontage, um, we're looking at establishing a uh, equation or some recommendations about how to evaluate some decision making when development occurs in this area or potential development occurs that addresses different factors such as employment opportunities, fiscal revenue, key considerations and um, helping guide decision making around what we see as really prime land in development for Smithville in the next 10 years or so. I'm going to move my screen north to the 169 South Industrial Area. And when we zoom in on the side west of 169, this is the area in the character schematics where we've looked to enhance the industrial areas um, of Smithville, partly because of the great buffers that exist in the area, the similar uses around that area, but also acknowledging in this southern area that there is residential uses, so having a potential commercial use or mixed use, uh, moderate density residential, kind of bridging the gap between potential industrial uses and the existing residential nature of the area. Across the street or on the east side of 169, we're looking at a moderate density residential land use pattern that really starts to transition that higher density in the south up to the existing residential character of the area. Uh, we see too on that 169, there's a strong opportunity to enhance commercial uses and provide that commercial retail frontage as development patterns occur in this area. Now I'm going to move, yep, so that was five explanation, and I'm going to move north. Perfect. So north of the 169 industrial areas, where the character area that we have established is the hospital bluff area. Um, if you've looked through any of the schematics and participated in any of the conversations on the hospital bluff, we're really looking at that nine, Route 92 as that divider of the uh, hospital bluff area. As Jack and I were working through some of these decision making, um, the idea of one of 92 expanding, having higher levels of vehicular counts over the next 10 to 20 years. The areas east of the schools um, are really prime for potential redevelopment. Uh, we see that this could be a perfect opportunity to incorporate more of that moderate density residential, particularly along 92. Um, that might look like anything from maybe cluster single family houses to townhomes to apartments. So really a wide variety of residential uses. And then as the market um, continues, if the opportunity is for uh, grows for commercial uses, you could have that similar commercial frontage along 92 when vehicular counts are higher and that area is more potentially suitable for commercial uses. If you can see my cursor, this kind of northern part shaded in blue. Um, some of it, of course, is already under development. We think this area could be really prime for continued residential development that enhances the residential footprint of the downtown district. So this kind of area in here would maybe transition from that moderate uh, density to more of the single family 2.3 density uh, dwelling unit that Smithville is uh, well known for. We've highlighted a few little parcels throughout that we um, expect to probably continue to 
work as uh, commercial infill too. So these little kind of pieces that you'll see in here on the future land use map are colored in commercial. Okay, and then north of the uh, Hospital Bluff character area is the downtown community oasis area. And that's gonna cover not just the downtown district, but the surrounding residential neighborhoods as well. And kind of marches to the Smithville or Smith, yeah, Smithville Lake to capture in that oasis element and the ecological factors that are really important to this area. So as I zoom into this area, um, if anyone participated in the task force, especially small town feel, uh, we really got into this idea and importance of the gateway into the uh, Smithville downtown area where capturing more people turning right can help support local businesses, bring more customers, bring more visitors um, to your downtown asset, frankly, and the beautiful like streetscaping and the investment that's already been taking place but will be further enhanced with the Main Street program. Adjacent to this gateway, we think there's a very strong opportunity to start to expand the idea of the downtown historic district to crossing 169 to really enhance kind of a, a place making approach to this area too, which again can strengthen that opportunity of connecting all the vehicle traffic along 169 into the downtown. That's this expansion area. This we assume would probably be expanded into commercial development. And then as people turn into the uh, downtown district, here we're proposing very similar to what's in place with zoning and similar to the previous comprehensive plan. We are hearing time and time again, this desire and this hunger for having a mixed use district with residential development occurring, maybe one day getting density a little bit uh, stronger, increasing maybe the heights of some of these infill lots, um, but really creating a place to live, work and play has been emphasized time and time again. And then also in the recreation pillar and trail and connectivity elements, this notion of a river walk, utilizing the Little Platte River to provide a new type of uh, community recreation opportunity that can not only just serve as uh, an exploratory place for people to, to come in and provide recreational opportunities, but to start to tie that into the downtown district. There was a lot of great conversations with that about providing more reasons for people to stay downtown when they are downtown, strengthening the length of their stay to increase more opportunities to support businesses that are existing as well as businesses that might fill into Smithville's downtown over the next 10 years. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit on this one. So we have obviously the really strong core of the downtown district. Uh, we see a strong opportunity, and Jack and I have had some great conversations about this, about expanding the residential area um, on the fringe of this downtown oasis right now to capture opportunities for more homes where people can walk into downtown easily, kind of strengthen the network that's in place, provide a, a more sustainable approach to development kind of in these fringe parcels. And then as I move my screen over to Smith Fork Park, we um, have talked at length about the conversations that are underway about annexing part of Smith Fork Park and maybe a couple of phases. And we see that there's a, a strong opportunity and conversations that you all have been having for years um, to continue by providing uh, what we would call a commercial overlay to this uh, Smith Fork Park area to provide more opportunities for commercial uses, whether that be like a hotel, like I know has been discussed, or other types of vendors um, that can really start to strengthen the visitor base and tourism economy in terms of the Smith Fork Park and provide enhanced um, tax revenue and benefits to the city as well. And 
And if you guys are still bearing with me, I'm going to just go through this north residential area um, pretty quickly. And I, I zoomed out a lot because it starts to kind of um, become a little redundant between, you know, 14 down here with some residential development, 15 and 16. Um, in this area, what we've talked so far about with the North Residential Character Area is really proposing to encourage residential development in areas that can connect existing neighborhoods, um, infill residential areas, and preserve as much of the agricultural open space um, in this north residential area. So we've gone ahead and just highlighted in blue some of the key parcels. This area down here is also uh, prime. I think development's already underway here for that enhanced um, residential expanded area. And then just scroll through this. Okay. So I've, I kind of did that top level overview of those areas of change as we go down in this story map. I'm going to zoom my computer screen out so you can see this all at once, which is going to be small <laughs> for you all to see on the computer, but just to kind of give that overview. We do start diving deeper into this in terms of the parcel by parcel, what that looks like in terms of future land uses. So again, what we have presented here is a draft. Uh, we're expecting feedback hopefully from you all um, throughout this process will also be sharing this with our task force members, discussing that with them during the last uh, task force meeting towards the end of August. And then we'll be talking, um, I think we're, we're planning on coming back in September to talk with you all more about this future land use map. This will be provided not just in the story map, but um, I'll be sending out tomorrow the PDF version of this too, so you can zoom in in more detail on this. And John, just to double check, was there anything that I missed or any points that you want to make sure we reemphasize? Uh, I don't believe so. I, I, something that we didn't quite touch on. Um, was potential annexation. I know there, there's a couple places where we include kind of um, in, in the future land use map areas that are outside of the boundaries of, of Smithville. Um, and um, just kind of thinking that that's a logical place for, for growth. Um, there, there's obviously different implications, lots of different implications for, for the city with those areas. And, and we can dive into that further, but wanted to call attention to those two areas that um, are not currently in um, the boundaries of Smithville. And then I know a main question that we have, A, is what questions do you have, but also is what's the right way, you know, so we're going to, again, send you the, the link to all, all of this is, is live and, and online and, and accessible from the um, planning site. Um, and, and as Leslie said, Jack will be following up with you, um, uh, kind of direct links to, to all of this. Um, and but we wanted to ask you all, what is the best way to have you either provide feedback um, to us? Is that really kind of um, having a response and hashing that out um, next month. Is there a way, uh, is there potentially interest in providing information um, uh, before then once you've reviewed further? We just wanted to make sure that if, if there's any preferences or ideas from, from all of you, we're, we're certainly receptive to um, hearing feedback and having further dialogue in, in whatever way is best. Are you up for personal emails, things like that, back and forth? Leslie? Yeah, that works for me. Again, we're at your service for this too. I, in a lot I would ways, so. I only and use task force and I, because of a personal medical issue, I was not able to attend any of the uh, last meetings and so I missed out on that. Uh, but I do want to be very much involved in this going forward, so. Yeah, I'm happy. I'll make sure when I send out this information to Jack tomorrow to be distributed, I'll make sure to provide uh, my contact information in there as well. If there's anybody that would prefer a one-on-one -on -one, um, 
conversation or that would be easier for them, um, just to call attention for those that were not able to attend any of the um, task force meetings. I'm gonna go ahead and reshare my screen. Just one second. And I'm just thinking off the cuff in terms of email dialogue, I think that makes sense to kind of start with just reaching out to Leslie. If there's a bunch of back and forth, it might end up making sense to streamline that and, and maybe either vet that through Jack, just so we're kind of, so everybody's involved and um, so the things can, can happen on kind of a cohesive parallel track. But maybe if it sounds okay to everybody, we'll kind of start with reach out to Leslie, but we reserve the right to, <laughs> um, and, and, and Zach and Cynthia too, if, if you have any preferences as, you know, as, as well. As well. And if everyone can still see my screen, um, we have established a, a portal. I don't know if anybody has been to this yet. Uh, it can be linked from the Smithville Comprehensive Plan page on your city website straight through to the portal. Under the task forces, there's a lot of great information from the meetings. Um, we include the video from the session. We did a lot of rapid polling to get information from people and, and start to weigh some decision making. You can view those results and then also view the slide deck or the presentation PowerPoint file too. And that's for each of the different task forces too. So I thought I'd go ahead and just share that and give a plug um, for that portal in case anybody hasn't been there. We anticipate in the coming weeks that there'll be some discussion opportunities that we'll be driving uh, task force members and community members to, to provide some information and input on some of the additional things that we've heard so far and how we're kind of taking that into directions for the comprehensive plan. And then with, in particular, with that employment overlay area in the 169 character area down at the south on the, the west side of um, Highway 169, we are going to be issuing a survey to start to understand more feedback particular to that and start to kind of guide some decision making and what, what's really important in that overlay. Is it employment and jobs? Is it tax fiscal revenue for the city? Um, is it community considerations and aesthetics and just kind of doing a really interactive um, survey through that with some great quadrant data visualizations if anybody is a um, data nerd on the team can expect to see some cool cool takeaways from that too so that uh, we anticipate that I believe will be sent out in the coming week so in between this August planning commission meeting and the September planning commission meeting okay am, am I correct in understanding then that we can go on the portal and see what happened at the task force meetings and then get up to speed and cash in and go from there. Absolutely. Okay. Just, just a little feedback on the task force meetings. I was at two of the meetings and I have to say that uh, I really appreciated the instant polling that you could do there among the participants. That was really thrilling. I'll say, yeah, I thought, as we went on through, go ahead, John. Well, I was just gonna say, me too. Um, and, and that was all future IQ and we're learning a lot about cool and kind of innovative ways to tie into, um, uh, do those type of things with, with them. So I, I, I thought that was, that was cool. And I, I learned from that, that process as well. And I, was, yeah. I was talking to one of our other, a member from one of our other boards who is an architect and does a lot of community engagement type of events and is still traveling during COVID and, and worries about those things and the masks don't let her see their faces and I told her about our polling and to watch this and she said well yeah some people will answer those uh, live polls that are in the audience that won't normally engage so I think I think it got us a lot of good data. Yeah. And, and Rand I would also um, thank you for pointing that out and to Deb's point those of you who weren't able to participate um, if you can go back in and take a look at those and get up to speed, there were there was a lot of good discussion in those meetings. Um, and as kind of the steering committee for this process, would encourage your all's feedback on that. Um, uh, you know, as we talked earlier to Leslie or to Jack or myself, um, just so we can make sure we get that that input 
in the process. And I know that Zoom meetings are difficult. I know timing is a little bit difficult. We're, we're coordinating a lot of different schedules right now, including the fact that um, David, the primary consultant with Future IQ, is in Ireland. So when we start those meetings, um, the later in the day it gets, the later in the day it gets for him. Uh, and while he's our consultant and he works for us, sometimes things that happen after midnight local time are, uh, they're hard. So we appreciate that flexibility too. And we appreciate all Leslie and John have done. Yeah, he was, he was planning on being in the United States for this whole duration until he got trapped <laughs> in Ireland with, with obvious unforeseen uh, circumstances. So. Yeah, yeah. If you all will recall, these were the, the sessions that were supposed to occur last March. So, um, yeah, it, it was going to look significantly different. Um, but I think uh, trying to restructure the process has, has added some value to the process as well. So we're excited about that. Um, but we, we move forward in the way that we can and, and get all the information we can and appreciate all the community input. Um, not only uh, your all input, anyone that you can encourage to participate is appreciated as well. I will um, be quiet now and get off my soapbox. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. Do you have anything else uh, for Leslie and John? Well, thank you very much for this update. This is uh, obviously very valuable to the future of our city. Well, let's see. Uh, uh, Jack, is there anything else for this uh, comprehensive plan update from you? No, nothing specific other than um, the, the link to the portal that uh, Leslie talked about. I encourage you all to go to it, to look at it um, and interact with the questions as well. Um, these were very good meetings. So um, we've got more coming up at the end of the month and early next month. We'll be advertising that stuff here probably Thursday, uh, maybe tomorrow. We'll get all that figured out. So. Um, Input is the uh, the public input is is invaluable, and your steering committee work um, is going to be even more important over the next thirty to ninety days. Will some of these meetings be back at the Performing Arts Center again? We haven't figured that out, but most likely they're going to be in the same format you're looking at. Um, okay. It depends on whether things open up. Um, I'm not it's as hopeful. I will share, I'm sorry, Jack, to jump in. Um, the, the meetings that, sitting in the Performing Arts Theater was difficult to see what was going on because it was on a very large screen and you couldn't always see what was going on. People no. could not hear your participation either. So I think we found um, that this was a preferable format to even, even when there were 25 or 30 people and a screen got pretty clouded, everybody could see the presentation information and when someone wanted to speak, it was very clear. And so I think it, it provided a lot better format for working. We, we tried that and, and provided that opportunity the last night of, of in-person. We just had one person there and her comment was, I think it would have been easier to have seen it at home. So I think we're gonna probably just do Zoom in the next round. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, well, we'll look forward, uh, John and Leslie, to seeing your smiling faces uh, more of events in the future. Well, likewise. Sounds good. You all take care. Uh, good night. Let's hey, Rand, before we move forward, yeah. um, I had some problems getting into the Zoom meeting tonight, so I missed the um, approval of the minutes. So I just need to know who motioned and seconded. I remember Dennis seconded it. Let's see who made the main motion. Oh, it was Connor. Connor, yeah, Connor okay. Connor and, then, and then Dennis seconded it, right? Okay, and then everyone approved. Did anyone abstain or anything? Everyone approved, okay. no one abstained. Okay, and then from what I'm seeing, everyone's here except for Carmen, right? Uh, exactly. Okay, all right. And, we, and by the way, we started right on time, so. Yeah, I had, I don't know what happened, but my laptop wouldn't let me in, so it took me a minute. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that for your sake. I'm <laughs> so. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to the site plan approval. Jack, I'm sure you want to give us a recap. If I can, yes. Um, your packet that you received um, Thursday included the original submittal by Mr. Chris Woods, who's uh, here and he'll probably be speaking here in a minute. 
um, and it included some crudely drawn changes that he and I had discussed. Um, and you got that document in your packet as well. Friday, you should have gotten a separate email after he submitted the changed documents to me um, that incorporated in a professional manner the crudely drawn ones that I gave you. Um, so uh, those changes that we had suggested were the, the defined top middle base on all four sides. Um, you can see um, it, on these two sides and in the back, they include uh, adding some changes in the coloration of the stucco um, to make it match the brick on the front. The front's got brick on it um, with stucco in the yellow parts. Um, and then he also incorporated the changes that we suggested or recommended as it related to the landscaping and buffering um, by adjusting some parking spaces up front. Those have all been, all those changes have been made as well. Um, so uh, staff's recommendation, obviously, uh, based upon all the changes that are now incorporated, would be that uh, it meets the site plan requirements and that there's a recommendation of approval from us. I would ask that you give Chris the opportunity to address any questions that you may have or to make a presentation if he so wants. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Jack. Uh, Chris, let's see here. I'm not seeing you on my screen. You must be there. Are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, oh, there you are. Okay. Hey. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you have a few things you might want to tell us. Well, I'm Chris Woods. I'm the uh, architect for the um, this proposed new convenience store at 124 North 169 Highway. Um, just a ballpark overview is that there's an existing 1500 square foot store there that the owner would like to uh, remove and have a new 5000 square foot store placed behind it. Um, it's a, it's a good store for him. It's a great location for him and he wants to uh, upgrade in every way. Um, there'll be a uh, kitchen component where he can provide some hot food um, and drive through and um, really just expand upon what is the success now for him to uh, more than double the size and uh, kind of clean up the whole site uh, appearance, if you will. And again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate these meetings. This helps um, uh, helps the architect involved very much to uh, kind of get a, an understanding of what you guys are looking for very early on in the process. So I appreciate your time. Excellent. Any questions for Chris? Okay, I guess at this point then we, we look for a motion to approve the site plan. So moved. Approved. So moved was Mr. Mayor, and then who seconded that? Second. Is that you, Connor? Okay. Oh, Den I think Dennis had the second, but. Oh. Who did? Yep, Dennis. Oh, Dennis. Dennis beat you out, Connor. Okay. Randy, do you have a clock where you can punch it? <laughs> I need one. Connor, huh? you're be in charge next week <laughs> or next month, so. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so discussion on this. I, th I think it's a great project. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. I think it's going to be really attractive, so I'm, hey. Yeah. Agreed. It looks to be a great addition to our city down there. Yeah. It's on the correct side of the road when I'm going to work. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go in for breakfast. That's really important, too. <laughs> it, it is because the donut place is on the other side, right? Yeah, that's kind of and, you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, any other discussion? Then let's uh, let's have a vote, Brandy. Okay, Deb. Aye. Mayor Boley. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Connor. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Did you hear that, Alderman Wilson? Are you Aye. She's, okay, there we go. Yep. <laughs> Carmen's absent and then Rand. Aye. Six zero. 
This will go to the Board of Aldermen at their next meeting next Tuesday evening with a recommendation of approval. Great. Thank you for being here, Chris. Hey, Chris, well, do you have a timeline of this project? Are you guys trying to get this construction season or next? We, the, the ultimate goal is to have a pad poured before winter, but that could be a little hopeful. But our, our goal, I, I know the DF Construction, the group that's behind um, the construction of it all, uh, wants to get on it as soon as possible. So, um, you know, we do have a few challenges um, that we're looking into to see for cost measures for the property owner, but if all goes well, uh, you should see some activity. Uh, we'll obviously go through the permit process, but after that, uh, activity as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Then let's uh, move to uh, the rezoning undeveloped land at Harbor Lake. Do you want to uh, give us a preview of that, uh, Jack? And I think first we need to open a public hearing, right, Jack? Yes. Um, open public hearing first. Yep, and we'll have a public hearing. The applicant is here in uh, City Hall, um, so we'll get him organized to come up and do the public hearing, and then we can discuss it afterwards. Okay, so we'll open the public hearing now, then. I think it's, uh, I think it's Mr. 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 Harding. Hi, can you see me? Can you hear us, John? I can. Yeah. Thank you. Good. You made the journey over from Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was uh, just north of Smithville today. So, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, tell us uh, what you've got going here, uh, John. Yeah, this is where you can propose what you think what your reasons for doing this are? Uh, really, fairly simple. We, uh, we have equine, and we'd like to use the property for uh, pasturing and running those equine, maybe haying and that sort of stuff at some point. Uh, and we need to get the zoning aligned with that kind of use uh, in order to proceed uh, to use the property the way we'd like to use it. So we're requesting that we rezone to agriculture. From R1B to A1. Correct. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Harding? I, I think first you need to close the public hearing if no one oh, okay. there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's close the <laughs> public hearing then. Now, there, are there any questions for Mr. Harding? Do you want a motion to discuss? Or? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm missing a step here. So do we, do we mo make a motion then to approve now? Okay. Yeah, All make right. a motion. Put up for discussion. Yes. Yeah. A, motion, a motion to approve and second it will allow it to be brought okay. up for discussion. Okay, I was not sure about that. Then. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Who's Was that Connor? Me? Yeah, I'll let Connor have that one. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you, <laughs> no, no one needs to do one to second now. Who, who will second it? I'll second. All who, right. Oh, that's Deb. Okay. That was Deb, yep. All right, now let's discuss this. So, Jack, first question Does the current zoning restrict any of those uses they just discussed? The current zoning does. They would not be able to have the animal husbandry on the uh, on the site. Uh, bringing in horses on single-family residential um, is problematic. So yes, in order to run horses like he's talking about, um, it would need to be A1. Theoretically, it could go to AR, but uh, AR isn't really, they're not looking to build on it. They're looking to just use it as extended field from what he just indicated so how many horses are you uh, looking to run john uh well on this property as well as the adjacent property we have a total of 11 head of equine uh 
they're kind of like me. They're all getting older, so this time next year we may have fewer. <laughs> but uh, we uh, we think uh, that the property certainly had a hand to handle uh, this, and the property will certainly adequate to handle that uh, number of equine. Okay. Well, there's several of us here that can look out our windows and, and look at that. So. <laughs> yes, I'm uh, glad to have uh, uh, good neighbors that uh, like to look out the window and see wildlife and and uh, horses and uh, that sort of thing. That's that's great. Right. Yeah. Any other questions for John? How many mules? <laughs> Deb, uh, let's see. <laughs> I think we have five total mules uh, and a donkey, and then the uh, uh, five horses. I uh, did see one rather handsome mule out the other day. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she thinks uh, she's special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Then let's vote, Brandy. Okay. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Carmen is absent, and now Connor. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Mayor Boley. Aye. Deb. Aye. And Rand. Aye. Six zero. Okay. Thank you for joining us, John. Nice to see you again. This Thank item. You. I look forward to seeing you uh, in person. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> not too long uh, out. Okay. Jack, this you item will. Something? Yes, yeah. this item will also be on the Board of Aldermen agenda next Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. for first reading. Okay. I see nothing else on the agenda here. I don't know if this table item needs to be mentioned. Isn't it, Jack? Yeah, if we could, item number seven was properly advertised um, moving forward when we got staff involvement with the Public Works Department. There were some significant issues identified in the surrounding public infrastructure issues. So we had to table. Um, the, the moving forward on it until we can figure out how we're going to handle some of the public infrastructure issues. Those issues are specifically the all the streets up there are private. There are no public streets in that subdivision. We've just discovered that they're all never been dedicated to the city. We're, so we're going to try and rectify some of these issues ahead of it. Spoke with the applicant instead of stopping and, and wiping this out and having to pay to re-advertise it. They've asked that this be tabled until we can get those issues resolved. Um, so it'd be a, a request to table it indefinitely. All right. I move we table the item number seven indefinitely. Is there a second? Is that you, Dennis? Dennis raised his hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mayor Bully, then then Dennis. Okay. At this point, then let's hear we'll another motion to adjourn this meeting. No, we we'll need. Start. Do we need to take? A, yeah, we need. We is need it a roll call or roll call or voice? A voice is sufficient. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say no. Okay, six zero. So before we entertain a motion to adjourn, you can see on the camera that says Council Chambers. The Council Chambers looks a little different. Uh, audio, visual, all that fun stuff should be in around the September planning and zoning meeting. My dates are close to right. Um, so probably the October meeting, if there's a few people that wanted to be in the room, um, we will have Zoom and everything still, but uh, it is a significant change to the room. Uh, you can hear better, but I think overall the Zoom meetings work pretty well for those watching as well, so. Um.
And currently, as you can tell from Jack being at City Hall, Clay County requires masks and buildings. So if that's still in effect, then we'd, uh, we'd be the same. So just yeah, giving great. you a little update, the room looks a lot different. It does, <laughs> very nice. Looks good. Yeah, it looks great. Okay. Well, all you have to do to get the chambers renovated is have the mayor paint the walls. No one likes it, so then you uh, go and renovate the whole thing. Say that again. I, I didn't catch that, and I wanted to. What was that? Brandy, Brandy got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, then shall we entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Back. You got a second. Connor got Who it. Who was it? I think okay. It was, oh, give it. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought it was Melissa, but okay. Yeah, right, let's give it to her. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. And all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, we're adjourned. No one opposed. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.